What is up guys, I'm back and this is the LG G4. Probably the result you'd get if you smash an LG G3 as well as an LG G Flex 2 together. So this is LG's 2015 flagship offering and it's arguably one of the best all-round devices launched so far this year. So there was a few things I was a bit skeptical about with the G4 and that was a 5.5 inch display since I saw I would never like a phone that was bigger than 5 inches, the navigation buttons which look a lot bigger than those of stock Android and just the fact that it isn't stock Android. But once you're finished watching this review you'll find out how all of these affected me and after using the phone for the past month or so I've had a lot of experience with it in terms of daily use and performance and I must say that it's legitimately tough to find much negative aspects about this device. But what's so great about the G4? Let's find out. So there's nothing better to start off with other than the 5.5 inch 2516 by 1440 IPS quantum display which comes in at a PPI of around 538 pixels per inch. This quantum display was created to essentially get as close as possible to the DCI standards used by Hollywood movie studios. The DCI gamut is an array of colors that can portray a rich overall image and LG claims that their display offers 98% of this DCI color gamut with deeper saturations in the reds and blues, meaning that it can actually display a wider range of colors than other LCD displays out there. So all technical jargon aside, it's basically a super sharp display with a really nice and natural color representation while not being too oversaturated like the AMOLED displays found on the S6 and S6 Edge. Not saying that the S6 and S6 Edge's screen are bad in any way whatsoever. In addition to the sharpness, color representation and everything else that this display boasts, it also offers some subtle yet extremely convenient features such as the ability to double tap it to wake the device and like I said in one of my previous videos, when using the display in direct sunlight it actually provides a more washed out look which drastically helps the outdoor visibility and it's something that can easily go unnoticed but it really does provide a better experience when using it. If you haven't seen my previous video going over all these little things that LG added to the G4, I'll leave it in a card at the top right of this video and it'll also be the first link in the description. So the slightly curved design brings us to the start of the design aspects of the LG G4. The entire device has an ever so slight curve to it that allows your palm to grip the device much more comfortably than the traditional flat design and apparently for myself only, it actually helps with reaching the four corners of the display much easier than if it was a flat device. So of course this is personal preference but for me, I really like the feel and experience this currently unusual design aspect brings. There's originally a diamond pattern on the back which I like but not as much as I like my fix of D-brand skins, which is why my G4 now looks like this. The back cover is also removable giving access to a 3000 mAh removable battery and expandable storage up to 2TB but keep in mind the largest SD card you'll find right now is probably around 200GB. So if you want to check those out, I'll leave a link to the largest SD card I can find down below in the description. At the top, you'll find an IR blaster, which we'll get to in a bit, while the micro USB charging port and 3.5mm headphone jack is at the bottom. If you take a look at the size, there's an absolutely clean look with no buttons. This is because the power and volume buttons all live at the back of the device. So this isn't new for LG since it was on the G2 and G3 as well, and it might take a bit of getting used to before you start feeling comfortable with this button placement, but once you do, there's absolutely no going back. In my experience, this button placement is absolutely perfect and I have no idea how come or why other companies haven't tried this as yet. You're already holding the phone with your fingers there so there's no movement necessary to change any volumes especially when on a call. Above the buttons you'll find the 16 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture and 6 axis optical image stabilization, the laser autofocus, LED flash and color spectrum sensor which helps you nail the perfect white balance every single time. To me, all of these fit into a pretty clean design but for some reason I can't help but imagine a stickman every time I look at it. The front is as typical as it gets with any smartphone today and there's that LG logo sitting under the 5.5 inch display which is something that would usually bother me but for some reason it just doesn't. Right on the opposite side of that LG logo at the front is the speaker at the back which gets surprisingly loud and the quality is not bad at all but it's not extraordinary or anything like that if you were wondering. I usually prefer not to focus on specifications too much as all the latest smartphones are pretty much neck to neck in this arena and it doesn't actually give an accurate view on how daily usage would be. But just for the sake of it, inside you'll find the Snapdragon 808 with a quad core 1.44GHz Cortex A53 and a dual core 1.82GHz Cortex A57, the Adreno 418 GPU and 3GB of RAM. So the reason most people would even consider the LG G4 is the camera. So let's see what's so spectacular about it. Starting off with the software, everything is extremely simple and minimalistic but if you want to get even more simple, you can simply hit that simple button under this overflow button here. See what I did there? Simply hit the simple. Okay, anyway, in auto mode you are guaranteed to get a perfect photo almost every single time. I took a lot of shots in moving vehicles through dirty windows and I've never noticed any problems with focusing or movement blur or anything like that. As you can probably tell by these images you're seeing here, the camera performance is just simply amazing. 
Vivid colors, extremely sharp photos and perfect white balance are what you can expect every single time. However, one downside is the fact that I've noticed a bit of over sharpening if you zoom in really close. Manual mode is where the fun starts. You have full manual controls over the GeForce sensor including shutter speed, white balance, ISO, focus and basically anything you can think about. But if you're wondering if the G4 can be a DSLR replacement, let me give you a simple answer. It's an outstanding camera that produces amazing photos, and in some circumstances you may even get photos that you wouldn't be able to tell if it came off of a DSLR or a smartphone, but in my opinion, no smartphone right now have what it takes to become a DSLR replacement, at least so far. A nice addition though is the fact that you can say the words cheese, smile, LG and a few other commands to remotely snap a photo with your voice, which actually comes in surprisingly handy sometimes. So knowing me in the past, you know how I feel about pure Android as compared to skin devices and here my opinion doesn't change. I would still much more prefer using pure Android than what is currently on the G4. But wait, there's no reason to leave the review yet, that's just me and I don't care much about all the additional features and all the bells and whistles and all of that, but you might. So my device currently looks like this and this is a custom home screen using Nova Launcher. Those small icons are a custom icon pack and the widget as well is also a custom widget I made using Zupa Widget Pro. Nova Launcher gives you that look and feel of stock Android with loads of customization for almost every single aspect, which is why it's the first thing I install on every device I own or are currently using. However, out of the box, the LG G4 looks more like this. The stock launcher isn't too bad, and there's actually this cool widget here that just loves to tell you how to live your life. Devon, wear a raincoat today. Devon, don't go out too much in the sun today. But it's actually really useful though, and it gives you a lot of little tips on how to plan depending on the upcoming weather. I personally don't really like the look of the icons and stuff, but there's the ability to change themes which should be enough for you if you're not too much into customizing your device. In the notification bar there's quick access to all the toggles via the scrolling bar across the top, and you can also easily control the brightness and volume with these sliders. And while we're on the topic of the notification bar, for some weird reason every single time there's more than around 20 notifications, I've noticed some serious frame drops. However, I received this device before it was launched and haven't received any updates since then. So maybe this can easily be sorted out with an update. Diving into the settings, you'll find the ability to change the lock screen animations and all of that good stuff, as well as some smart settings which for some reason I decided I don't need that much, only to realize I could have saved a lot of my data if I actually used it. The software buttons can also be rearranged and you can have up to 5 of those down there, and you can also change the colors to suit your liking. Dual window is also here like you have probably seen on some Samsung devices, which allows you to use two applications simultaneously, assuming they support the multi-window feature of course. And in theory, this could be useful to a lot of people, but honestly, I just didn't use it that much. Another way of multitasking on the G4 is by using the QSlide applications. These are specific applications, mostly stock applications, that allow you to resize and move them all over the screen, and their transparency can also be changed as well, which is really handy if you're trying to copy something from the layer below onto the current window. So now onto some more of the little things that LG added to make the experience better for us consumers, and again, if you haven't seen the first video specifically focused on that, I'll leave it linked at the top right of this video, as will also be the first link down below in the description. So the IR sensor on the G4 can record signals, meaning if you have a remote you're trying to replace with the G4, you can customize your own remote and record the signals of the actual remote control, which actually came in really handy for me since you can say I'm a bit more on the lazy side than not, and having all the remote controls stored on my smartphone really helps with that. So you can also enable flashlight alerts under accessibility, which will make your LED light flash every time you receive an incoming call or text message, and finally, if you dive into the accessibility settings under vision, you can find an option to slightly play around with the way your display looks, which is cool to experiment with. But overall performance has been outstanding for me, except for the minor micro lags here and there like in the notification bar when there's more than 20 or so notifications, but all of these things I usually expect with a device that isn't running pure Android. However, chances are if you're a general consumer, you probably won't even notice these things. One thing I do like about the G4 though is switching between applications has been an absolute breeze. I love the fact that I can go all the way up to an app I had open since like the day or two before and it's still there loaded in memory, so as far as performance goes, I'll give it around a 9 out of 10. Battery life though is where things get a bit disappointing. Up to this day I haven't been able to comfortably get a full day out of this device, granted I'm a really heavy user, but still. This can be improved with an update as well, but for now the battery life is just mediocre. And just in case you forgot this was actually a smartphone, call quality is the best I've ever experienced on any Android device I've used so far. People on the other end sound absolutely clear and loud and whether you're in a noisy or quiet environment, you'll probably have a good calling experience. So the G4 is a very solid smartphone and I'd highly recommend it to anyone once they don't mind a skin device of course. I haven't had any major issues or setbacks and I honestly just really enjoy using the device. 
Consuming media is absolutely amazing with its 2K display and clear loudspeakers as well, and it's no slouch by any means in terms of performance. If you notice I didn't mention specs much, it's because I prefer to focus on daily performance rather than specifications, which is the same reason I prefer not to benchmark devices. It just doesn't give an accurate assessment on daily performance. Finally, how do I feel about the larger than usual software buttons on 5.5 inch display and should you upgrade if you're a current user of the LG G3? Well, within one week I was already comfortable using the device one-handed and the fear of a device over 5 inches is absolutely gone. The software buttons still bother me slightly because of the aesthetics but it's slowly fading away and you should definitely upgrade from the G3 in my opinion. So that's been it for this review, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.